Hey there, everybody. It's Michaela from Ascend Smarter Intervention, where we make research-based reading intervention easy. Thank you for joining us here today. And if you are here, then I'm guessing that you are interested in knowing what this common literacy intervention belief that could be holding you back is. Today, we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about a really common belief that we see in this field and why it's actually a mistake in literacy intervention and maybe holding you and your students back. So this mistake that we're talking about is following a program blindly or with fidelity without tracking your own data. A lot of times and often in the past, we've heard well-meaning interventionists and SLPs and other professionals say that they had an evidence-based literacy intervention program and they were following it with fidelity, but they weren't tracking their own data. They said that because the program was evidence-based, it was enough and they knew it was going to work. Now, don't get me wrong, an evidence-based program is a critical component to your intervention. We need to make sure that what we're doing is backed by data and backed by science. But as interventionists, we also need to be tracking our own data. If we're not, then we might be missing the mark and we're risking our kids continuing to fall through the cracks. If you're not tracking data in your intervention, then this is the sign that you might have been looking for to say now is when we need to start. If we don't track our own data, we risk students not picking up on certain skills and not being able to really understand and digest the materials we're giving them to their full potential. It's also telling the curriculum publishers or it's assuming that the people who develop these programs know more about the kids sitting in front of us than we do. We're saying that, okay, we don't need to take any data because they know our students, they know what they need, and they've built it into the program already. I want to be really clear here. You know your students best. No curriculum publisher, no program developer, no other interventionists are going to know the children sitting in front of you better than you do. They can't. You know what these kids need. And data is going to be the only way to get them the biggest results possible in the shortest amount of time. Let me break that down a little bit. When you go through an evidence-based program and you use that framework, you're going to give students really solid intervention if you're going through all of those pieces. So if you're going through phonological awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, comprehension, and writing, which is what the research says we need to be doing, if you're going through that, you're going to make a difference for these kids. That's good. But by really looking at their specific needs, you can target them more heavily. So for example, if you're working through a program and you're hitting on all five core components of reading and writing, and you notice that Johnny is really struggling with vocabulary, but Claire is really struggling with phonological awareness, you can add supplemental vocabulary work or phonological awareness work in for those respective students to really target their needs. Not only is this going to get them better results, but it's going to reduce the amount of time you're spending trying to get them through the intervention program because they'll pick up on things faster. Now, that might sound like a lot, but it really doesn't have to be hard. When we look at the data, like I mentioned a second ago, once we're noticing holes and gaps, we can immediately pull in targeted activities to help our students. We see here as the video moves that some of the pieces were red and green and yellow. And that's the system that we use here in our private practice so that we can see if a student is proficient in a certain area, struggling in a certain area, or really, really struggling in a certain area. Based on those different data points and those different scores, we'll then pull in supplemental activities to target those specific skill sets for each student. One child might get a fluency activity, like you see our reading passage there. Another child might spend more time in writing. We might hit vocabulary a little bit harder with some students, or some students might need auditory discrimination as a part of phonological awareness, as you see in those targeted activities there. This is the only way to make sure that we are using the data and using the science that we ourselves can collect to target our students' needs as quickly and efficiently and effectively as possible. And now we get it. We've heard all of the objections. We've said some of these ourselves in the past that 
data tracking takes a long time. If you're trying to juggle a group of five students and you've got four groups in a day, that's a lot of students, so we get it. We've heard that data tracking is too complicated. You don't know what data to track or how to analyze it. We've been there too. But like I said before, this video, if you're watching and you're sticking with me, maybe you're a sign that today is the day you start tracking this data without any more excuses or objections because we don't want this to be an objection for you. We know that this is going to be the best thing for your students. So we wanna give you our data tracking system for free. This is the actual system we use. You can see the video going through here, filling in one of my students' data points so that you have the actual system you need to make sure you're not holding yourself back in this intervention setting. We've got the digital version and a paper version for whatever your setting is, if you're online or in person in your preference, and a goal bank for you as well. When you download this data tracking system, we'll also have a link for you to jump in to our data tracking series so that you can get more information. I'll also link it below for you so that you can jump in right away and figure out how to know which data you should be tracking, how to organize your sessions to make data tracking easy, how to analyze that data quick to quickly and effectively, and how to report on that data so that you have all of the steps you need. Again, thank you for joining us today. And please, if you took nothing from this video, please start tracking data in your sessions. That way you can target your kids' needs and know that you know your students best. Nobody else can know your students better than you do, so they are lucky to have you. Have a great day and we look forward to chatting more soon. Bye.